Welcome to Msansi Oz Diary. My name is Connie. If you're new here, you're welcome. So we're back to this food poisoning. Like I said before to you in the last videos, I made a few a series on this chemical poisoning in South Africa. Sadly, we have another incident. Another child has died, a 10-year-old, and the mother and the four-year-old are in critical conditions after eating allegedly the same snack from the same illegal migrants puzzle shop. This is sounds like a joke now. Just talk about these deaths that are 100% preventable. Again, two weeks later, more than two weeks, two and a half weeks, we're back to another death, another critical incident in a township in South Africa that is also related to the same type of snacks being brought from this puzzle shop that's been built. I cannot even, this is, sounds like a really joke right now to repeat this every time to talk about this incident that when I look at it every time in this and I think, oh my God, what are the authority thinking? What, how can they be so incompetent? Like I said in the other videos that I actually explained very well that when you don't have a manufacturer, you, the most important thing a, an officials can do is to let, tell everyone the message from um, using the media, any platform, and stop the sales of these products. Because you don't know where the contamination is. They're still looking for the source of the con of the table force that killed those six kids in Aledi. Now another township now in Alexandra. One child has died, a 10-year-old and a 4-year-old, and, and the mother are in hospital in critical conditions. We're dealing with the same issue you know the law is there the gmp standards is there for a reason it's there to protect all of us to protect the consumers uh, if the product hasn't got a proper labeling like a manufacturer the batch number the expiry date is not a legal product you shouldn't consume it don't buy it and the officials in South Africa, the public health officials should have been educating the consumers. But the most important thing is that they must use their power to stop the sales of these products, to stop the sales, because they don't know where the contamination is, whether this contamination started from the manufacturer. And to this day, they cannot say 100% who is the manufacturer. The supplier and the spaza shops they're all different the a person can supply could be the supplier could have a you know get these products somewhere but where they manufacture it it's where the issue where who is manufacturing these products i mean the thing is we cannot even say it's a contamination within in the shops itself because of hygiene standard that we saw in the last videos we just cannot assume. The problem is when you're dealing with this something, you cannot make an assumption. You must follow the recommendation, the standard, the gold standard recommendation of when you have incident like this, the first thing, the first principle is to protect the public from all this onslaught. Protect the public and how you do it, because they don't know where this thing comes from, is to stop the sale. You've got a power to stop any sale of this product and you also have the media to, to speak to their consumer and tell them do not eat this product do not buy it do not we don't recommend because they're not safe they're not safe these snacks are not safe you're listening to me you're south africans these snacks are not safe your government your public health if officials cannot tell you for sure who 
make who makes this product? They cannot answer that question. That who is the manufacturer of this product? Have they have they actually raided that place? Have they looked at that place? Have they checked that they follow the GMP standards of manufacturing? How can they say hundred percent the contamination did not occur in the shop in the manufacturer? Because even if you shut this past the shop, uh, you say let it be run like by South Africans as before. If the manufacturer doesn't comply with the GMP standard, there would still be a contamination. There will still be kids dying out of this. So the source is important here. The source is important. It's a couple of weeks. We're here again. We're still talking about another death in South Africa in the township. All right, let's listen to this video. Which is, of course, the death of a 10-year-old girl from suspected food poisoning. It's claimed the victim, her mother and her brother all fell ill after allegedly eating food from a spaza shop in Alexandra. Now, last week, the health department confirmed that traces of organa uh, phosphate turbifus was found in six children uh, who died after eating snacks from a spaza shop in Soweto. Toxicologist Dr. Gerard Vadurin is with us uh, to give us more of his views on this development in Alexandra. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Vadurin. Um, unfortunately, we're back here. Um, Please don't say you're surprised. Lost their life. Do not uh, say you're surprised. A situation, a tragic situation, but are you surprised that we're here having this discussion again? I'm just saddened about the fact that we have another case which is reported um, about human mortality, and um, I do not think it's going to end there. You know, and I thought about this morning compared to what happened in the Congo Basin a couple of, or a year or what to go, where there was a a Congo fever outbreak or Ebola outbreak, the World Health Organization declared a national or an international pandemic. So Africa is at that point now. We've been losing so many people to, to poisoning that it's unbelievable. And um, just to clear up the slight misconception, it's not actually food poisoning, it's poisoned food. Yep. Because all the indications are there that we're talking about food that's been infected or infested with some sort of a poison like turbifos or aldicarb and i believe there's others involved also so it is a very very serious case actually critical at this moment yeah and it's interesting because you make that that distinction that we're not talking about uh, food poisoning we're talking about poisoned food we've heard the the health minister for instance talk about a specific substance or chemical agent mm. that they found to they be wouldn't there. know which chemicals um, because they shouldn't like have it they wouldn't know things. because I'm, the chemicals not allowed to be there in the first place you guys have allowed all these illegal aliens to run puzzle shops and i don't even understand that you cannot you, you, you cannot store your food and your chemical just like that. The simple thing as the storage of chemicals in these puzzle shops. And then when they, they also remove labeling, presumably to actually make sure that authority don't recognize when they enter the shop so people don't have to see it, don't have to see and ask themselves, what is this? That's also, it's illegal. It's illegal. Anywhere else, it's illegal. We can't be here again and be talking about this thing again. Well, if you talk to the North Africans on the streets, and I do my walkabouts every now and again, wherever I go and I talk to people, they all know the word halaferimi. And that's a word which is commonly used by South African people for two substances. The first one is the very old elder carp which is still on the streets. And then also lately, it seems to also be used for the turbifos. And these two substances look quite similar, if I can use that word. The aldicarb is more black, whereas the turbifos is more of a grayish color, but both of them are extremely toxic. The turbifos is an organophosphate, the aldicarb is a carbamate, but despite the fact they belong to different chemical groupings, they induce the same symptoms in a patient, which are rapid onset of severe nausea, severe vomiting, dizziness, um, pupil constriction, severe in the case of aldicarb, less severe in the case of turbifos. And unfortunately, very few people survive those poisonings. And if I hear the news, and I don't watch the news because it's too daunting to me, me to listen to all these, this, what happened this morning with the family seems to be 
a typical turbia FOS case because normally if the doctors get an elder car patient and they use the, the antidote, they resuscitate the patient very rapidly. But with a turbia FOS, it's a known fact globally that turbia FOS patients do not respond well to the treatment. So I will not be surprised if this case of today is turbia FOS also. But um, what happened to me this morning after our first show I did this morning, I started getting information from private citizens who told me that they're concerned about not only the spaza shops, but also the factories where these people manufacture foodstuffs. And I now think I got to the bottom of it because I know for a fact that some people are packing these pesticides illegally into small packets to turn it into a poison. Mm. And if they do that in a food factory outlet, you can automatically assume there will be contamination. So you might buy a sealed pack of noodles or... ANC. You know what? I, pay, I blame the ANC and I blame the DA in this. They are together in this. They should be responsible for this. All of these deaths, it is the result of DA and the ANC. The borderless South Africa and supported by DA and having these Paza shops run by illegals in South Africa. How can you have somebody who is illegal running this stuff? Yeah, there's nothing good can come out from illegal migration. Illegal migration, it's unlawful. People that engage in this uh, behavior, they are unlawful people. They don't have good character. The minute that they show up, they show up in your border, you should assume they're criminals. You should treat them as such. You should never be allowed to set food and be provided with um, responsibility of running spas a shop. Even with this, just listening on what they do, what he's found, privately found through his investigation. So uh, I'm just, yeah, disappointed. Biscuits or candy for the kids, and inside that will be a severe toxin like aldicarb or turbifos, and that I think is where the crux of the matter is. In other words, um, at the point where people manufacture or package this stuff, there's contamination there, let alone the fact that it's, it's sold on every single street corner of Africa sure. by street vendors and a few spots of shops. Okay. People take any food stuff from them. Do you not buy it? Mistakes. Why are they so still it even going to these puzzle shops? Wild out there. And it is so that's severe. that's oh, what I don't I understand. Why, why people, people are still going to these puzzle shops? Stuff. Because it's the only puzzle shop, shop they have? Huh? You don't know. Why? Yeah, but the the rates need to start at the manufacturer that's where it needs to it, it where all along they should have started there that's where they should have been looking there okay they should have started there and also they should have stopped the sales of this product they know which products are these are the same product that have killed the same kids last fortnight ago so they know the source they know the what product they source, but they don't know how the contamination, where okay, where in that to, chain you know, just, of, uh, you know, these are actually shelf product from them, I will assume, from the manufacturer or even from the raw material they use to make these snacks. That is the chain they need to follow. But I haven't had anything from all of them whether they've actually followed the gold standards of checking these things. More and more South African kids are going to die, be poisoned by table fours, be poisoned by all the carb, by all of these chemicals that table fours, the registered compound, it is scheduled, shouldn't be in any of these shops. Shouldn't be any, you shouldn't see it anywhere. Where is the police? This it should be a combined law enforcement, including the NICD, should be involved in this and educating the public, just like they did during COVID, about this, because this is a pandemic. You guys are facing a pandemic of your own doing, of neglect neglecting the standards that are there, the GMP standards that are there all over the world to safeguard the public. This is your own pandemic created by your politicians with the borderless South Africa without any safeguard of the 
poor South Africans who are in the township who are likely to be using and find value in accessing these, uh, you know, smaller shops because going to the town, it's expensive. Don't have public transport, it's very expensive. So it's better, it's more convenient to go to this puzzle shop than to go to the town. So you bring in illegals in there to do this stuff. For the people don't even when they have these symptoms, they, the ambulance may take about 45 to be an hour to get to them. I blame this ANC and the DA. They are involved here. The DA, um, John Van Steen is, and is a minister of agriculture. These products are the agricultural product. I haven't had him coming out and talking about this because it involves his department. I haven't had him. What has he looked at? What are the sort of things that have worked with the Department of Health to make sure these products that are agricultural products that are meant to be away from the street? How are they actually uh, stopping this? Where is the loophole? How these products get into the street? Because they involve the Department of Agriculture. The Minister of Agriculture is the DA Minister, Dr. It is John van Steenhansen. It's not Dr. John van Steenhansen. He is the Minister of Agriculture. I haven't had anything because these issues are in the black community. That's why we haven't had anything there in the black community. These issues overwhelmingly affecting the black community in South Africa, 100%. And these problems were caused, it's caused by the borderless South Africa, created by ANC, supported by DA. This is why you're here today. This is why you have your most important thing, your food source, being infiltrated by illegals. There's nothing good can come out from people who are illegals. They do harm into the society. They don't provide any value when you have them in your community. As the size that are in there that you get from the shops are safe pesticides. Here, we're dealing with illegality here. It's illegality, okay? It's illegality that because these pesticides are scheduled, they're being brought somewhere where we don't know because we, the Minister of Agriculture hasn't said a word about it, about how did these illegal immigrants get hold of the table force how did the table force be on the street because it's registered and scheduled how did it get to be on the street in this puzzle shop on the floor in an informal trading that is the best the first question so we're dealing with illegality the pesticides that are available are safe that you get from the shops are safe and these people use these pesticides because they do not tidy up where they leave I, I illegal migrants in south africa the place turns into becoming a slump um, a stinky slump and when you have that you get rats you get rats everywhere so tidying up cleaning up Washing, follow this hygiene and in ensuring that these dangerous, poisonous chemicals are not on the street. And I now, for the, for the first time in possibly 15 years, understand where we get all these problems from because there are people having unlicensed, unregistered food manufacturing premises. Remember, they're all controlled by the Department of Health. And if they don't have sanity there or sanitation there and they don't have proper separation between the foodstuffs they manufacture and illegal pesticides, there's bound to be contamination. So this lady told me she thinks that the effort from the police and Department of Health should be at the places where these people, the owners of the spa shops or the suppliers of spa shops, manufacture or repack foodstuffs 
and they should go and look there because that is also the information they get from you shouldn't be banning table for she should ban and stop the illegal migration you stop allowing illegal migrants to work in this puzzle shop and to work in this illegal failed tree you need to have law and order and continue to safeguard the community by making sure people don't come in with these products through the border and the product that are made in South Africa are scheduled. They've got a good channel where they need to go, which the agriculturist, if they are seen somewhere else, it's illegal. Police need to be involved. As simple as that. And they also have these illegal pesticides in their possession and they put them into small packets and that's where the main contamination comes from because I could never work out... So they need it and also they need it for food safety as well. If they get food that the crops that don't grow, they infested by this stuff, and you can't use the most effective, um, you know, pesticides um, like table force because of illegals. No, so now we that's ridiculous. A strong possibility that at the point of manufacture or repacking, the food becomes contaminated with these two terrible, terrible toxic poisons. Yeah, and so, I mean, I'd be keen to see, you know, who responds to the conversation we're having now, then to follow up in... Uh, what happens within the factories themselves. But I want to talk a little bit about pesticides within our own communities. I mean, when we hear of another child that's lost their life, you, you, you almost want to find some sense of power um, in and of yourself in your home, right? What is it that we need to be thinking about on how we treat and work with pesticides in our communities? I think... Uh... Yep. Another story, another poison, another death in South Africa. Yeah. This story is really uh, affecting me so much. And I was thinking that this week we're going to hear some breakthrough that they've actually gone to these manufacturer and they found the source of table force. Remember there was table force that killed about six kids about a fortnight ago, three weeks ago. We don't know the source of that table force. Where was the contamination? They ate the snacks. They took the couple of those snacks that I ate and then they, they, they checked it. They didn't find any table force in there. But we know from the medical exam that they died of table force. But they haven't found the source of contamination. Where was the contamination? To this day, we don't know. Now, three weeks later, Alexandra, another black township, another another story of death. Myself as a community member. This is South Africa. They go on and say every time that they've actually worked harder and they stopped the, um, what do you call it, the apartheid system. ANC did not stop apartheid. Apartheid system is privatized. And you can see with this the continuation of apartheid, even the worst form of it is this case of poisoning. This issue of dropping, getting people that they haven't actually screened that are illegal in South Africa. They haven't screened, they don't know where they come from, and dumping them into the township. What do you think? you got someone who's illegal, you don't know where they came from, what they were running from, where they're from. Through the help of these NGO, you get them to dump them into the township. And you must put all and the then they create these um, in other words, problem there mask, your mask, your with eyes, the people that are also skin, being actually skin, under very skin, severe skin, circumstances skin, of skin, being skin, not skin, part of the community in South Africa, now, being disadvantaged. I get in so much, and you bring all these people who would then take advantage of them, that you as a government, you haven't actually checked them, that they are actually of good character. This is an example of how bad borderless South Africa has become. This is an example of failed migration, failed integration, that is lead to this death, and ANC is leading the chart and DA there is next to it. And this story, I am going to steal. There's still going to be another story because until they find this manufacturer, until they shut it down altogether, we will still going to talk about it. It will still be another story, another poison 
poison food, being poisoned with a chemical table force, organophosphate, and an illegal all the carb, carb meat. All right. Thank you guys for listening. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And please, if you're South African, please share this video with your friends. Make sure that they know that they should not, under no circumstances, be going into this puzzle shop anywhere and buying any product in those puzzle shop. You should know. You should not ever be doing it. If the authorities don't do it, you need to protect your family because they don't know where the source is. If you want to protect your family, you don't go and buy any any product. It's very unfortunate because this is then going to affect those who are doing the right thing, but you don't know. Even with them, they may be another victim because they don't know where they get them from, who makes them. See, the contamination could be manufactured. It wouldn't matter. Is the good is a, a good legal citizen or migrant legal migrant who's selling it? It wouldn't really matter if it, the problem is from the manufacturer, which is where they should have started, which is where they should have it should have led them to. We are here tonight, and we will be here again talking about another death if they haven't if they don't act and take this matter seriously. Because Thank you guys for listening. Yeah. Have a lovely a day. To think about. Bye. Unfortunately, though, for this family in Alexandra, for this 10-year-old little girl, it is too late. But thank you so much for speaking to us. Um